This is Beacon Evangelical Church Online, seeking to be fruitful and multiply. A light to our online neighborhood, a beacon set on the hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news online and wherever he tells us to go. We are here to show and tell others the good news of Jesus Christ. Build up the body of the church in love until all are ready and able to take on this task. Beacon Evangelical Church Online.
Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to live to see another day. We thank you for remaining merciful to us by keeping us healthy and alive. I pray that you will continue to guide our path throughout the rest of this year. Dear God, I pray that you will come and take complete control over our Sunday service. Please show up in a mighty way that all will come to realize that you are the only true God, the God who never fails or disappoints. I pray that you will anoint us today, Lord Jesus. This I ask in no other name, but in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I remember the significant time when at least four children accepted Jesus into their lives. Veronica and I were both really touched, emotional and praising God. Following the lesson on what is heaven like, Trey asked the question, who can go to heaven? They each made their own decisions and came forward to be prayed over. Each child in turn was asked to say if they understood what they were committing to. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that testimony. Now we're about to start our prize giving. And um, as always, we like to start with the youngest first. So we're going to begin with the creche. We have four prizes, starting with Miracle. If Edwina was presenting these prizes, she'd say something about Miracle perhaps being the head girl of Kresh this year. Followed by the head boy, which is Theo. And then we go to the youngest of our Kresh children. We have Portia. and Amari. All of them so cute. And that concludes our crash of 2020. Let's give them a round of applause. And of course, Without the workers, we wouldn't be able to have crash. This year it's been quite tight, quite tricky, but thankfully we've been able to accommodate our very young children. So let's give our workers a round of applause too. We're so thankful um, to them for their time and their energy in looking after these young ones and allowing parents to have that time to be able to focus upon the word of God. Moving up from creche, we have our infants class. And so, we start with a prize for Sean. Ebenezer. Summer. Ashby Daniel Jose Thank you Beacon Church for my Sunday school for my Bible I'll read it when I get back from London Bye Kalia, and finally, Taylor. We present to you the infants of 2020. A round of applause, please.
again, a dedicated team of workers. We thank you so much for all that you do. And may God bless you as you continue. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper and He's deeper than a submarine. He's higher than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper and He's deeper than a submarine. He's higher than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. 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 Now we shall hear a testimony of one of our young people who have been who has been helping us um, in the children's work, James. One of the areas I explored was working with Sunday School and Chris. It was interesting to see how they interacted and learned. It reminded me of when I was younger and when I used to be in Sunday School with the boys laughing and talking about the Bible. It was very fun. I felt like I was very useful to the teachers and that I could give my input to what they were doing. I feel like I'd be more drawing, more drawn to the senior class next year. I hope next year I'll be able to get involved with them and be about get involved with them as well. Thank you, James. We look forward to you, yes, helping out with the seniors, but also coming back to support us as well in the juniors, infants, and the creche. You have been such a great help and really just uh, gelled with the, the younger children. So hopefully you will find your niche in the years to come. Good morning church. Good morning. You know these have been a crazy last few months that we've been living in but what's been amazing to see is just how many people around the world have been encouraging their health workers. Italians have been singing songs from their rooftops. On Thursdays, people have been clapping for the NHS. Or in Hansworth, you may have heard the doll drops playing, which has been sick. You may have drawn um, a picture for the NHS and put it on your window. 
and it's really good encouragement um, for the NHS. You know, a particular story that amazed me was that of a, um, a paramedic who was left with chocolates and cakes on her car at 4 a.m. in the morning as a thank you. It was just a wonderful story. Encouragement, you know, can be such a wonderfully powerful thing. Um, right now, uh, the best-selling book on Amazon's religious studies section is a uh, fascinating, incredibly timely book called We Need to Talk About Race. Um, it was written by a pastor in London just a year ago, so it's incredibly well-timed and um, with the BLM protests going on. But actually, importantly, before he wrote the book, he asked two of his good friends who had written books themselves, Governor B and Andrew Wilson, who may have heard of them, whether it was a good idea. And actually, they were very enthusiastic about it, giving him, even giving him the link for the publisher to send it to. And so through their encouragement, this book is now having a big impact on the Kingdom of God. You know, for myself, this last year, um, I've been making music with my brother who actually released a song recently. And um, a key part of that coming out was a big piece of encouragement from a friend in Manchester saying, go for it, man, let's do it. Having a positive attitude about it and saying, you can do it. Was there a time when somebody really pushed you to do something? How did they speak to you? What was that encouragement for you? Um, you know the Bible is filled with encouraging things but it also shows us, to, us how to encourage one another um, and it's crucial especially in these difficult times to be able to encourage one another as a church, um, as a collective and actually in the UK we live in quite a cynical culture where we think of the negative the majority of the time. Um, a well-known writer said Americans are brought to believe they could be the next president president um, and Brits are told it won't happen for you. Maybe at school a teacher or somebody that you looked up to said you wouldn't succeed in a particular thing or you wouldn't do well in life but we are here today to tell you that God is always for us and crucially he teach us he teaches us to be for one another and encourage one another on. Yeah, and actually we see this at the beginning of Colossians which is what we're in today so if, you, if you've got your Bible turn to chapter 1 and here Paul shows us how to be encouraging and generous in our thinking toward one another. And just hear how encouraging he is in this text. Try to listen out and, and maybe you'll write down some of what his words are, his phrases are, if you've got pen and paper available. He says this, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, and it is also as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learnt it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. You know, the first thing we see um, here in the text is that Paul is thankful. Can you imagine being in Birmingham and you're the only Christian in the whole city? Can you imagine how difficult that would be? You know, there'd be no one to talk about the Bible with. There'd be no one even to get a Bible off. That would be incredibly lonely, incredibly difficult, it would just be terrible. But actually God has given us family, fellow people who believe in Jesus. And that is so precious and good. You know, Paul is thankful to God for that, right? Paul sets his mind to the positive here. God is moving in this church in Colossae. How wonderful is that? Paul thanks God for their faith, it says, it, and, it, and their love and their hope in the gospel. You know, uh, later on in Colossians we read that there's actually issues in the church. Paul talks about um, dangerous and wrong teachings that are present in the church. But actually he doesn't begin his discussion, his letter to them, um, by discussing their problems, which is actually such an easy thing for us to do, discussing the problems straight away. You know, Paul sees God at work in the Colossian church, even in all the mess. And this is crucial for us to see, I think. You know, I'm definitely, as Fallon knows, I'm definitely a glasses half empty kind of guy. I usually see the problem and not celebrate what is good first. 
Um, an American industrialist who had 43 millionaires working under him said, Men are developed the same way gold is mined. Several tons of dirt must be moved to get an ounce of gold. But you don't go into a mine looking for dirt, you go looking for gold. And that's exactly the way to develop positive people. Look for the gold, not the dirt. The good, not the bad. The more positive qualities you look for, the more you are going to find. So guys, when you see your brothers and sisters in Christ, when you see your family members, do you see the gold or do you see the dirt first? We have to cultivate a culture that is thankful for the gold that God has given us in our friends' and our family's lives. The second point we want to highlight is that Paul is positive in his prayers for them. So Paul is not just thankful for them, but out of that thankfulness, he is generous with his thoughts for them, positive in what he wants to pray for them. In verse 9 it says, And so from that day we heard, we have not ceased praying for them. So Paul is generous with his time and his thought. He earnestly prays for them, for their good and for their knowledge to be built up in Christ. If we are for some, someone, we, we want to invest our time in them. We want to see them do well. And that's what we do. And in Birmingham, it's been really interesting to see that so many people starting their own business. And actually how amazing it is to see people supporting one another through that. You know, advertising on social media for one another and buying each other's stuff or services. And that's because they want to support one another. They want to see their friends succeed and progress. And so they invest time or even money into one another doing well. And actually as Christians, we should have that same attitude towards one another, investing in one another, building one another up. And prayer is one of the most profitable ways to do that. Here Paul prays for them to be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all spiritual wisdom and understanding and he prays may you be strengthened with all power for all endurance and patience and joy so he prays for their learning and growth he wants to see them go further and deeper in Christ but Paul is not only thankful and prayerful for the church in Colossians, he is also hopeful for them, hopeful for what they can become or what they will become. And that's the third point we want to see. Paul is hopeful for the church. Verse 6 says, The gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world, it is bearing fruit and increasing as it also does among you. Here Paul is saying that the gospel is on the move, it's moving forward in the world. He has a positive outlook on the progression of the church in general, which isn't based on nothing, it's based on what he has seen in his life and across the world. And he has that same hope for Colossae. The general trend is that the gospel will increase throughout the world. This should shape our mindset about the church. We should be encouraged by this. We could easily be discouraged by the trends in the UK over the last 50 years that say the number of those in their 20s attended church has gone down from 50 to 3%. But globally, the church has increased dramatically over the last 100 years, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, the Philippines and China, where numbers have gone from a roughly 19 million to around 670 million. This is incredibly encouraged. Church, please be encouraged by this. In verses 13 and 14, Paul says that God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins we have been delivered from a kingdom of darkness to a kingdom of light how can we not have hope for the future since he has done this how can we not be hopeful for our brothers and sisters which he has done this for paul is hopeful for the church in Colossae. yeah so Paul shows us how to be encouraging and generous in our thinking toward one another by being thankful, by being prayerful, and by being hopeful. And actually, at the centre of this way of thinking is the gospel, the good news that God is for us. Amen. And he is generous and he's always encouraging towards us. In the book of Acts, 
when the church was starting off, the Lord blessed it to grow, to expand, to move forward, to see healings, to see doors opening in all sorts of arenas. You know, God is so unbelievably for us. We do not deserve to be backed, you know. There's nothing that we've done to deserve backing. But actually, you know, Jesus brought into his own close friendship when he was here on earth. Um, he, he brought into his, into his close friendship a group of undeserving people like us that, were, that he stuck with throughout the thick and thin. One of his disciples, Matthew the tax collector, who would literally take money from his fellow brothers, the Jews, and give it to their occupiers or oppressors, the Romans. He was such an, a betrayer of his people, and yet Jesus saw more than that in him, right? And he sees more than what is in us too. That's why he died for us, because he loves us. You know, it's not about our ability. It's about God's mercy and love toward us. God Almighty, ruler and creator of everything, of the whole world, is for each of us. Mm -hmm. And out of that, how can we not be for one another? If God is for me and for Fallon, how can I not be for Fallon? We were really moved um, by Paul's sheer encouragement in this, uh, in this passage, uh, reading it about a year ago, and the generosity of thought he has for those in the church at Colossae. And he actually, he hadn't even met them at this time of writing. But he was still proactive, he had that willing them on kind of attitude, which is just amazing to see. You know, how much more should we be thankful and generous with our thought to people that we do know that we have met? You know, this is uh, more and more how we feel about church and our fellow Christians, that we, we, are, we are thankful, we are prayerful and we are hopeful for church. This is something that we've been learning over the last year or so and actually it's really affected our mindset and given us a sense of being a part of something bigger, more glorious and more wonderful. It's given us more joy. You know, you guys have been given a prize, it's prize given today. And, you know, God and the church are thankful for you, they are praying for you, and they are hopeful for the best in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you um, for being so for us, Father, that you... You came to earth and you died for our sins that in order that we would come back to you and be friends with you and we'd be able to commune with you. And then you set us on a mission, a world-changing mission. Lord, you give us so much and you encourage us and you're behind us. And no matter what we do in our lives, no matter what silliness we go through, you're still for us, um, still willing us on, still wanting us to be close to you, Lord. Um, Jesus, you are wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Lord, thank you so much for the hope that we have in you, that we can be prayerful for those who who are amongst us and, and who those who we have not met, Lord. I pray that you would bless us with a generous heart to, to spend more time praying and being thankful for those who we know and who we have not yet met. Amen. 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 Bless you, church. Now we're going to move to the junior class and the prize is there. First prize will go to Enyo. Trey. My book is called Bible for Minecraft readers and Jesus' followers. Here's, here it is and I'm going to say thank you for the giving me this book because I do like Minecraft and it does make me really want to read it. Roshni Ariana Jasmine Amiria Ashish Sade I have extraordinary women of the Bible 
Thank you for this book and I'm really missing Sunday school. Hope to see you again after lockdown. Sanai? Lauren? Samuel? Thank you for my prize. I really enjoyed my time in Sunday school and I'm sad because I have to move on. Frank? Carlos? Mercedes? And Josiah. Josiah. Church is a really nice place to stay at because you get Josiah. to play, you get to write, you get to draw. And Tiana. And I also Reuben. Jesus. And Jesus is a spirit and and he protects us as well because because he can do lots of things as, and lots of stuff. Amen. And Tiana. This has been an amazing group and we've really seen God move in this class um, answering many prayers amongst this group. We actually started a collection, um, collecting for a boat to help uh, a friend of ours. Um, it's obviously been interrupted um, because of COVID-19, but we hope to resume um, that collection um, when we start to meet back together again. So let's have a round of applause for the junior class 2020. great team, allowing God to use them with the children. Thank you so much, Julie. Some of our juniors will be moving on to the senior class, but also they'll be moving on to secondary school. And we know that this is a time of great change for those. So we just want to pause and pray for them at this moment. Father God, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our juniors. We thank you for all that they have brought to this class, O oh God. Everything that they have contributed um, to our junior class, we say thank you, O oh God. We want to pray for them now as, Lord, in the few weeks, they will be moving on to secondary school. Father God, we pray for them. You know the, the difference that there is in secondary, secondary school. But Lord, we want to ask that you will be their protection, O oh God. We want to ask that you will help them to settle in, that they will find um, friends in their new school, O oh God. We ask you, O oh God, that you would help them to remember who they are, to remember that they are children of God, and not to be ashamed of this fact, O oh God, but to be proud and to be bold and to, yeah, to share with those who they meet um, the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, I just pray that you will be their protection. You will be um, around them, O oh God. You will be their guardian as they go to their new schools, O oh God. That you will help them, O oh God, in the, the work. It's going to be different and not just because it's secondary school, but because of the big break that they've had um, over these last few months, oh God. So we ask you, oh God, that you would indeed help them to 
to really just find their feet, oh God, and uh, just to trust in you and to know, oh God, that you will support them. You will indeed help them, oh God. I pray that they will remember many of the lessons that they have heard and learnt and talked about in the junior class. And Lord, they'll be able to put some of those things into practice as they move onto this new stage in their life, oh God. So Father God, we ask that you pour out your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then our final group is the senior class. So our prizes go to Roberta, Detona, Grace, Alicia, Itrina, Anthony, Faith, Patrick, Kaya, Nathan, Joshua, Maya, Ryan, Christopher, Reuben. Leah, and last but not least, Anna Kay. An interesting bunch of young people, some of whom have come to the end of their Sunday school days and will be looking forward to experiencing something new trying out, testing out a new ministry area. We ask you as a church to continue to welcome them and to encourage them as they draw alongside of main church in different ways. We're going to hear some of their thoughts um, as they look back on their Sunday school days. Hello Beacon family. Um, I'm going to be talking about three things I miss about going to Sunday school and three things I've learned. Uh, the first thing I probably miss is group discussions because we've got to talk about a lot of stuff in Sunday school and I'm going to miss that of course. And the second thing is doing the Bible game where we get to like go in a circle and like you have to say the book and then if you get it like if you hesitate or get it wrong then you have to sit down. So I'm going to miss that because I learned a lot from that as well. Um, another thing I'm going to miss is learning new things in um, Sunday school in general. I'm going to um, miss about learning about um, what Jesus done and all the disciples. And three things I've learned is um, learning that Jesus has healed a lot of people in the Bible. And learning that God wants a relationship with us. And learning um, about all the books of the Old Testament. And another thing is... Um, for all the um, kids that are still in 
Sunday school, just keep going. And in the end, um, you learn a lot. And finally, thank you to all the teachers that have taught me a lot of stuff in Sunday school. And can you name them? Um, Auntie, from when I was in my first year in Sunday school, I think it was Auntie Helen. And I can't remember. When I went to juniors, Auntie Veronica and Phil. Gita. And then when I was in seniors, it was Uncle Harley, Uncle Philip, and Gita, and then um, Edwina. So thank you. My journey in Sunday school has been an experience. It's had its high and its lows. I have learnt many different lessons. My advice to you is take in what you learn, but always look over it yourself. Stay true to yourself and stay blessed. Sunday school allowed me to learn about the gospel and help my outlook on life improve. It helped me with my everyday lifestyle as I implemented the teachings I'd learned into my daily routine. It also helped me adapt and become used to learning environments and benefited my school life. The teachings and lessons in Sunday school also helped me out personally as you tackle the issues that may occur between friends and families. Sunday school educated me on issues that Christian youth enjoy in society and also taught me how to take the correct stance in solving these problems. Um, I think I think my journey through Sunday school has been, been very good. Uh, I think it's been a chance from early off to make friends. So instead of just like seeing people after church, um, I think you get a chance to connect with them because you're actually like spending the whole Sunday with them, like whilst you're in church. So you're learning with them as well. Um, I think what the teachers in there, it like broadens our knowledge of like the Bible and it just prepares us. I think like the impact it has for me, it's preparing me for like going to, like home group and that. So when we go to home group, I think I'm prepared to like share my opinion like openly and like be able to talk in groups and everything. So yeah, I think that's another that's another impact that it's had on me. But I think just the overall the overall journey's been good. I mean like it's funny as well like sometimes because like you, there's people that talk a lot and like you, you, when you're there you get to listen. So. Like some of the stuff that like there's some people that can talk like forever, so like it's just good hearing what other people have to say as well. Yeah, but also I just want to say thank you for almost when they school teachers really because they've helped they've helped broaden my knowledge and helped me become a better person. I mean, a lot of them are, act as mentors as well and like father figures and mother figures, mother figures. So yeah, I just want to say thank you for that as well. And now let's put our hands together and give them a big applause, uh, Senior Class 2020. As we applaud them, we also give thanks to the workers of that class. Good morning, this is Tim here with the notices. So glad you're able to join with us this morning in our service. It's good to know that we're together worshipping the Lord. It's just a week or so since our week of prayer where we were looking at the theme of how to deepen our faith and stay faithful in these changing times. It was good that we were able to use Hebrews chapter 10 to 12 to help us during this week and every verse seemed to say something to us. We were challenged, should we shrink back in times of difficulty or shall we go forward and trust God? We discovered that in this world, the world that is broken, 
because of our sinfulness, there will be so many challenges. But we serve a God who has come into this world and stood alongside of us in suffering. And a God who gives us hope that transcends the COVID-19 pandemic. We were challenged to focus on Jesus. After all, our faith is about relationship with him. So we should fix our eyes on him every day. We were challenged to strive for unity, to keep our church community together in this time by loving one another. We were called back to the adventure of the Christian faith, just as we've been studying in Acts, that every day should be a day to wake up knowing knowing that God has prepared those good works for us to do, has prepared a path for us through the day that really will be an adventure. We were challenged to live in the Spirit because we need him every day to live that adventure. We were challenged to see The marginalised come and worship the Lord with us. Come and find an answer to the things they're going through. And that every tribe and nation will come and worship together with us. What a vision. And we were challenged to be prepared for the things that are to come, the season that is coming. For we all have a gift and a role to play in this family that God is making to change the world and to bring his love to the people around us in our community. Please come and join us again next Sunday for our Sunday worship at 11am here on YouTube when we'll be looking at the seventh part of our Acts adventure based on that challenge. Go, stand your ground in the face of trouble. I'm now going to hand over to Philip, who is the leader of the children's work, for a few comments from him. Well, thank you for being at our Sunday School prize giving service. Um, we really appreciate that you've been here and we hope and pray that something at least one thing or many things were a real blessing to you. We pray that you will continue to feel and know the blessing of God and that you are a prize in his eyes. I pray that the the message and the good news of Jesus will reach you where you are and continue to build you up. I want to thank everybody who's contributed today. It's been a fantastic Um, effort by everyone involved, the young people, the middle-aged people, the old people, all have been involved. And we would like to thank you, as you watching, for being here and sharing in this service. And we're going to just pray now as we go about our business from here on in. Father God, we bless you, we praise you, we exalt your mighty name. We thank you that you have been the presence, the glue, the everything, Lord God, that's made this service possible. Continue, Lord, to bless everyone who hears and has been involved in this service and is watching it now. Bless them. Be the one that supports and strengthens their life inward, outward, and for all time. We give thanks and praise to you, almighty God. Glory and honor be to your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Bye-bye. See you next time.